Give me all your raw impressions Your thoughts, your words, your mind I don't think I've ever figured out a really good rhyme for that Your thoughts, your words, your time I like that one and mind Oh, can you hear me? Yeah Okay Quite well Wonderful Good morning. Good morning. I am 58 years old. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yesterday. Yesterday was Lou's birthday. We didn't, we didn't speak on my birthday. I I was really unhappy about that. I didn't realize, I I didn't realize my birthday was over until we were finishing the show. (laughs) And I looked at, I'm like, I was, cause I checked the time or I was loading out or something, Mm -hmm. picking up my stuff from the stage we have a lot of gear Mm -hmm. you You guys have so much gear no when i saw it in the living room i i didn't panic but i thought oh wow (laughs) you have a lot of gear bigger than sebado i don't know what's going on here there's actually surprisingly (laughs) surprising a few surprises about this full complosion tour Mm -hmm. more gear than sebado yes um it's just john and i to do (laughs) well Mm-hmm. It's all necessary. Look, totally necessary. You know, we're an electro duo. Technology is a part of our our sound. It's what people expect. It's we what we want to deliver. A full. We do want to deliver the whole range of the band, which requires gear. Yeah. So, loading out. I look. It's like ten o'clock at night, and I'm like. My birthday's over. <laughs> I didn't even get to talk to Adele today. <laughs> I'm like, that would be like a present, you know? That's you're, mm-hmm. you're, you, you are the universe's present to me, really. I'm sharing that. I'm just going to say that publicly. publicly. Mm-hmm. Perhaps it's something best whispered. But we haven't seen, we didn't talk all day yesterday. I know. With just a f- couple of texts. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, there's a storm coming from you. <laughs> and I was mm-hmm. just like, I was like, I didn't have. You time. seem to not have any free time. I didn't so have I, a minute I, to spare. Yeah. It was just, and I'm like, oh yeah, tour, <sighs> touring, mm-hmm. touring and driving. It's like, I hadn't done Sebado in a while. And Dinosaur Jr. is easy because we have, we got Jake, and we got Noel, we got Tomas. Got a bus. We got a bus. I don't, I only have to show up for like, I don't know, maybe three hours in a day. You know, the sound check. I don't set up my stuff. You know, I kind of, I kind of breeze in and out and have a very (laughs) self-indulgent, kind of a quiet life Mm -hmm. that I live when I'm with Dinosaur Jr. Um, This is not, not that. And. Also, interestingly, it's causing the most, it's the loudest thing that I've done. Because I can't put on full earplugs. I've got to be sort of engaged without earplugs. Yeah. Because there's a lot of subtlety within the music. And there is a dynamic that we have. So I can't wear earplugs. I can't fully plug up and sort of protect my ears. I can only, I do one side to sort of hear myself in my head. And so anyway, I didn't get, I didn't, you know, I'm not a huge birthday guy, Yeah. but I do like a couple of indulgences on my birthday. And we, I did have sushi. That was cool. I did have a, oh, John nice. and I had a nice sit down sushi lunch, dinner lunch. So that was nice. In Boston there? Spent some, uh, yep, spent some merch cash on a, yeah, almost right next door to the venue. Nice. And the venue had a marquee. Cute. It said the full complosion on it. Oh, I hope you got a picture actually, of it. This is, this is kind of cute. Um, did, did you get a picture of it? I did. Um, oh, good. It's kind of cute though. When we rolled up, it said full complosion on the marquee and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Wow. We got a marquee. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, well, it doesn't say the full complosion. 
<laughs> which is our official name. Mm-hmm. But I didn't say it out loud. I just said it in my head. I was like, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to say it to John. I'm not, I'm not, no complaining about the marquee, you know, that it doesn't have the official name. Mm-hmm. So this woman that helped us, I believe her name was Debbie. Amazing. Like just so she didn't have any idea who we were, but she was just nice and just into making it a really nice night for us. Come out where we load, we finally got all of our stuff into our white Pacifica rental minivan. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I look up and she changed it to the full complosion. Oh, totally on her own. She's like, yeah, I went and changed. I mean, this, this sign is like 20 feet off the ground. <laughs> I think she got a Aww. ladder Aww. and changed the name to the folk implosion. How do you think she knew that it wasn't? I don't know. I don't know. Did she do that during the performance? No, she did it between when we loaded in. And I'm sure she did it after sound check or while we were sound checking, perhaps. Interesting. But it was, so last thing I was going to do to Debbie after she did everything for us, I mean, made it was a wonderful night. They did every, they just really catered to our every need and uh, made it super easy for us. Last thing I was going to do was be like, and by the way, it's the full complosion. You know, your Instagram account is just folk implosion, by the way. And I don't love that because whenever I, if I trying to like tag something for the folk implosion, I'll be like, I'll go like, oh, I have to look it up again. And I go to look up the folk implosion and it's not. So just FYI, someone could be very understandably confused because your official uh, Instagram page just says folk implosion. I'm okay with folk implosion. But right now it's the folk implosion. But Debbie changed it. Debbie got on a ladder. And changed that shit. So that, I guess that, that was my birthday present. Sushi and uh, Debbie, who had no idea. I mean, you know, never heard the folk implosion. That's nice, Debbie. Yeah, Debbie's, Debbie's cool. You know what that says about Debbie? She cares about details. And I like people who care about details. You know what else Debbie said? What? She said, tomorrow's my dad's birthday. Which would be July 18th today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's turning 55. I'm sorry, what? He's Debbie? turning 55. Debbie's dad's turning 55 today. See, when I also hear Debbie, Debbie is a name from my childhood. Debbie. Debbie is a 70s, 80s girl's name. So this to me is, I was like, Debbie's your age. Debbie's in her mid 50s. I don't know young Debbie's. One more thing about Debbie. Yes. I'm not entirely positive that's her name. I've been, I've had so much, maybe my <laughs> hearing has been damaged so much in the last couple of days that I was just like, I just hear Debbie. It seemed unlikely that her name would be Debbie. And she certainly did not look like a Debbie. Yeah. Debbie. But I mean, Debbie's a real, I mean, Debbie, <laughs> Debbie's a vibe, Debbie's a vibe. And, God, uh, I mean, I, I we've actually, all met Debbie. We love Debbie's. I think, I, I think I actually, Debbie. <laughs> yeah. Debbie is like, could be a really good name for a cat. Speaking Debbie. Of. <laughs> yeah. Well, Oh, this reminds me. I should share with the listeners. Um, <laughs> you know, we're still, we're still planning on getting cats in the fall. I don't know if we've ever shared that, that we decided on a time. I don't know. That, you know, what? Sorry to interject. Yeah. I watched Todd Berry's stand up special on the plane the other day. Yeah. And then he does this part of the show where he just shows pictures of his cats, which is really, really <laughs> funny. Uh huh. Especially with his delivery and the whole thing is just fucking great. Um, but he also shows the damage that the cats have done to a couch. And I this know. couch is like I'm... fucking destroyed. And he, pl he does like four different pictures from it, like. This is the uh, left-hand side of the couch, and it's just fucking torn. And you can see the wood. I mean, it's like torn right down to the fucking frame of the couch. And then there's just even more, like, here's the right-hand side. Here's the back of the couch. I'm like, I'm like, oh, my God. 
I'm, I fear for our furniture. I really do. I'm, I, I, and Izzy and I have already discussed this. I, she said, what do we do so that the kitties don't ruin the couch, Mom? And I said, well, we're going to have an endless task, an endless, endless task of just what I've read is you just pick them up and you, you just gently move them to the scratching post and then you rub them and you say, good kitty, good kitty on the scratching post. So you just pick them up, move them, pick One, them up, move them, right. pick them up, move them. We were talking a little bit about dogs before this, and uh, you can't explain that to a cat. You can't be like, don't do that and shake your finger. You do right. Well, that's why they said it's it. just physically move it. But then you do you give them like what sounds like a soft, high pitch voice, which they assume is a good thing. Good kitty. Good kitty. Good kitty. It's so much better over here away from the couch. Yeah. Scratchy, scratchy on this thing. Um, so let me finish my thought, though, which was I was going to tell people uh, about our listeners about the dream I had the other night. And so Debbie, actually, I love Debbie as a cat name, too. I'm down with Debbie. Debbie can go into a, a yes pile because you and I are allowed to name one of the cats. We're planning on getting two cats. Izzy's in charge of the other one. So we can Is it only okay that I've, I feel a little bit of like I don't want Izzy to name the other cat. <laughs> is that That's awful? Kind of, kind like of, I actually, kind of I want to. I want to step in. It's like I, I rarely have that impulse. I'm like, wow. I'm like do I we have to get three cats in so you can name two? <laughs> I, I, oh, sh- maybe oh, shit. because I do. I do feel like I, I, I'm like I should have the privilege of naming two of these these creatures. Wow, no. we're looking for three cats. Great! Really oh my god! Oh my then, god! Then one of them's like the outcast. One of them's really fucked up. And there's always you I can't know. have three cats. There's always a although I've I've had although well then you have to get four because I've had okay four. let's I've just stop four. let's stop all right anyway <laughs> so well Your dream. okay let. Okay, okay, listen, I had a dream recently that um, felt extremely realistic. I I was, like, curled up in the couch in our home, in my dream, our home, and you were there. And all our of a dream sudden... dream home? No. It wasn't our dream home, but it was my dream home, the home that was in my dream. So, and just this beautiful cat, like, appeared on my chest and then was looking at me with the most loving adorable face and purring like crazy on my chest and was just Mm. like hi Mm. and it was great and i said oh hi georgie oh Uh, and i was like what you know and and i it's it's filtered in uh, adele we had where did that come from georgie is a recent name that you came up with no, oh, that's yeah. what I'm saying. From the dream. I don't know why I don't know where it came from. I have no idea. All oh. I know is I woke up then and I told you about the dream and I said oh, this I had was a... if you, this wasn't last night. This was like in the last week or so. Oh. Yes, don't you remember oh. me telling you about this dream? I did. I thought you were telling me a new dream. I'm sorry. I thought this was a whole new dream. I did. Is this 58-year-old Lou? Okay. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. Yep. Okay. There's, there's, okay. There's some, okay. Yep, that's right. There's I a delay. There to... was a delay. Okay. So yeah, No, yeah, I'm, I'm I told to this dream to 57-year-old Lou, and now 58-year-old <laughs> <Yeah>. Lou. <laughs> totally forgot it. Clean slate. Uh-oh. Bad news. Didn't, so... stop, didn't stop taking the Xanax soon enough. Oh, well. Oh my God! Looks so like no, Lou's gonna be a little bit forgetful. I'm referencing that dream I had like a week or two ago. Remember oh, yeah. when I when I said I had a dream? Uh, this beautiful cat appeared on my chest, and for some reason I called it Georgie. And you wow. were like, "That's a great name," and I'm like, "I said that's wow. a great name." Then I, I then I practiced with the folk implosion for. Then I started a tour. And now I'm remember trying to remember lyrics. So anyway, I I'm not beholden to Georgie. We don't have to use Georgie, um, but I would. What my point was this is that Georgie is now though added to a list for us, which are really, it's a small list because the only other thing on the list right now for me is John, <laughs> because that's your dad's name, and no one named a child a grandchild after him, and so I feel like some. I don't know if obligation is the right word, but like it some, is. It is maybe right it's an word. obligation. Okay. Mm-hmm. To like, yep. 
attach the name John to some living thing. John's a good name for a cat, I think. Yeah. I think there's actually some sort of brand of kitty litter called Johnny Cat. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> John. I mean, and again, I there now since I've gone down this rabbit hole decision of that I'm we're going to have cats, it, you know, the phone has read my mind and when I choose to go on to TikTok, uh, it, it's like it got the memo. It, it read my mind and said, here's all the adorable cat videos and, and nothing too scary, just the adorable ones. I ended well, considering, up on like considering super cute ti- cat talk. Yeah, what TikTok can deliver. Yes, I'm grateful. Yeah. So yeah. profoundly grateful because TikTok is, uh, is yeah. literally sandpaper for your, for your heart, your brain, your mind, your spirit. Mm-hmm. Hey. And then you're like, wow, why do I feel like really bad about my life, myself, the world. I feel like I might just disappear. So anyway, I, I ended up on cat talk and, but cute cat talk, cute cat talk. And there's like so many people talking about how they have a bazillion names for their cats. And oh, yeah. uh, anyway, this one woman, her cat's name is nutmeg and who I, she, her videos have now come up a few times and she's like, if you don't have 500 names for your cat, you shouldn't have a cat. And this is nutmeg, but I don't just call her nutmeg. I call her, what'd she say? Like nutmeg, the stallion, like after Meg's the stallion. Anyway, just, she had so yeah, you many. You should be walking around your house. Just like, just, I mean, I find when I'm, when I've been a cat owner, Yes. And the, and the love is just truly just when you're in the zone, infusing the zone. my life, you know, yeah. when it's just everywhere, when you, they're patting around after you, you know, hoping to get fed because they're constantly fucking hungry. Never forget. <sighs> Never okay. forget. They're always hungry. And that's Great. actually their prime, that their number one concern food, which is, you know, depending on the day can be a little depressing, you know, that you have a that that you you're reminded of the gnawing hunger of existence, and you know <laughs> you are they remind they they can remind you of that some days other days or mm-hmm. within the same day or five mm-hmm. minutes later they can remind you that that you know cuddle up do you think it's a bad idea to get kittens, or should we get older cats I fucking love kittens okay <laughs> I fucking love kittens time with a kitten. Is a gift. Kittens are incredible. Like, even when they just stick their dumb little, their little spiky little paws, and they, they're trying to figure things out. It's so. I've had, I've had in my adult life. I had two, if you can call being twenty two, three an adult. But I had my first litter of kittens when I was twenty three. You know, from a mm-hmm. kind of a wildcat, <clears throat> um, and then my second when I moved to Los Angeles, like we we had a housewarming party, and someone was like, well, "I was like, I really want cats," and someone said, "I got, there's a whole fucking litter of feral cats underneath my house," and I'm like, "Excellent!" And I went in the car and fucking got them the next day and put them in my bathroom. But boy, <laughs> it was <clears throat> like, you know, with the mom. Mm-hmm. So, because that's the other thing. I mean, the the great thing, and I'm I'm so grateful for that experience. Is like the mom cat, just fucking covered in kittens, just sucking on those teats, and the mom <laughs> giving that that deep like that just that purr and boy, good things. That so good. So yeah, kittens. I don't know. As soon as okay. as soon as it's it's okay to remove them from the mom, right? Bring them to me. Bring them, bring them our way. Okay, yeah. Bring them. Yeah. Bring them. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm sure Izzy would go bonkers having some little kittens. I mean, you know, my God. <laughs> now that I'm 58 and my life is, you know, my studio has to be really closed because uh, kittens. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, they, there's, actually, there's... this room should probably be closed too. Your studio, because 
uh, cats do that thing. I, I don't know if all cats do, but I'm assuming they do, where they just look at you and then they knock something really important off. You know, it's like I've always seen that in cat videos. I've never, oh, never experienced Bob, that. Bob did do that, but she was so tender. She would just kind of like gently pat it and look at me, and then I'd be like, <laughs> "Don't do it." <laughs> I'm fucking hungry, Mom. I'm yeah. fucking hungry. Do you understand? I'm going to knock this coffee cup over. I'm no. so fucking hungry. Can we just... I love talking about cats, but I would like to <laughs> circle back to you and the folk implosion real quick. So you were on... You've had three shows. The mm-hmm. first tour, your guys are on the road. You're in a minivan. You've You've got three shows under your belt. How's it going? It's, um, I'm just going to say right away, the, the, the only negative thing that I can say, I'm just going to say the only thing is that we're sloppy. It's sloppy. It's messy. Um, John, the is one, it, is it charmingly sloppy? Apparently. I think it is. Yeah. Apparently. Okay. And the really, I mean, because I'm making a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I mean, a lot. And if I don't make... I told you people love you guys. It doesn't matter. They're there to see you and support you. And you told me that, Mm -hmm. and I felt it, and I'm feeling it from the audience is making that apparent to me. Because what is happening with some of those songs (laughs) is truly criminal (laughs) and and heartbreaking. To, to, To that version of myself, let's say the... The 20, 20s, 30s version of myself that um, that when I was to make a grave mistake in a song, like really missing Gross. lyrics, completely spacing <laughs> on fingering, just really fucking up, I would get a hot sweat, like hot. I would just feel this like hot embarrassment. That would creep up my back and right up my my primal brain and then begin to make me feel very deeply ashamed and disappointed in myself for making these mistakes that, you know, the people wouldn't even notice. We're making mistakes that everybody notices that are so glaring, so obvious, so, I mean, borderline uncomfortably awkward. But people are still just like, yeah, it's cool. And because of that, and also because of the sort of a lot of the talking that we did before I embarked on this, when I realized that it was truly going to be during a course of of a performance, we were going to have to endure and perpetrate some real musical travesties to these beautiful songs that John and I have written together. I'm really super proud. I mean, I'm you know, I really try to stay away from pride these days, but I really love, there are corners of our catalog that truly just make me feel so happy that I lived to make that song. I'm like, I did, I was part of that. I did it. You know, there's just so many little funny, quirky tunes that we've done. And then some really beautiful fucking completely fleshed out. I don't know how it could be any better kind of recordings that never fail to just make me feel like I accomplished something. It's like I fucking, it's like I built a fucking stone shed in the back of my house and it's going to be there for fucking 700 years, you know, like that kind of a feeling. Yeah. You know, it's always going to be dry. It's never going to be too damp. I mean, just like you built a solid, you built something solid and it's there. And I, I love visiting those places, but, um, yeah, what's we're, we're making a lot of fucking mistakes. But I'm, and I'm not feeling embarrassed about it, which is really nice. And I'm just, and I'm getting this outpouring of, there's just been, people are so fucking nice to us. And I mean, I really, in general, like, you know, the last 25 years of my musical life have been a lot of really nice feelings from people, you know, um, small but appreciative audiences, large and appreciative audiences from Dinosaur Jr. A lot of my work has been, I've been, I've gathered a lot of appreciation and really good feelings from what I've done from people. And people are really generous and tell me things that really, truly like mean something to me. And, uh, 
so I'm, I mean, really grateful. And I'm also really grateful that John and I, this is just the beginning. And by the end of the tour, we might be able to play six or seven songs, like I said, really well in the course of our long performance, because we do a lot of stopping and starting and I bet it's so fun. Yes. We're telling did a lot it just of start story. did it just start raining where you are? I don't think so. You sure? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm hearing the sound of rain in the background, but I don't know. Could be something hmm. that's happening in my in my body. Oh, it started raining in my gut. I turned fifty eight <laughs> and I started to hear raindrops in my gut. <laughs> It just sounded like rain, but that, Ani, I think that's great. And I'm so excited for you. And I, I'm so grateful that people are there and they're giving you guys the love because you both deserve it so much. And you're such a unique, wonderful duo. And I'm just really happy that you guys are taking this chance and going on the road and taking a chance on yourselves and, you know, putting it out there and, um, so that's great. And, uh, you know, the very first night, our mutual friend, Mark Shu from Guided by Voices, he lives in Kingston. He messaged me and sent me videos and he just seemed so psyched. So that was really lovely because I was feeling very nervous and also anticipatory being back here and thinking of you. So thank you to Mark. If you listen to the podcast, that was very nice. And then... um also, I saw that this guy, I think his name is Scott, he, his profile said he's like the founder of Stereo Gum or something. Like, Oh, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He came to the show. Yeah. I expressly told him not to review the show. He said, like, hey, I'm Scott from Stereo Gum. And I said, Scott, <laughs> under no circumstances are you to review this show. <laughs> And we then proceeded to play. It was our first show. I think I still have, I have this residual. So he fear came up of, to say hi press. to you. He did, and it was really nice. He was a really nice guy, and uh, I, uh -huh. I like stereo. I like music journalism, honestly. But stereo I do, gum's a, been very nice to you over the years. Very I think. nice to me, and but I mean, I do still have this residual like fear of of the press because in the nineties, eighties, and nineties, and into the two thousands, press was very important and could sort of make a make or break a band. So I'm, I'm, I still have that kind of like, Oh God, they're going to break us. This is it. This is when the, the facade is torn down. I mean, and writers, a good writer can really, really tear you apart and really dissuade people from listening to you and really yes. create, I mean, it's true. they had, they had, and they have still like a lot of power when it comes to that. So I, I find it very fearsome and intimidating. So I did jokingly say, you know, because we, we did then embark, we played for like, well, Corey, the owner of Tubby's, Corey mm -hmm. is a, a, from Austin, cool guy. Um, he was an amazing band called spray paint. Corey like is the booker for his club. And, uh, mm -hmm. he said it was the longest performance in the history of tubbies so we played for like three hours and actually saying we played for three hours is incorrect we simply occupied the stage for three hours telling whatever stories john and i generated through our speaking to each other and stopping and starting songs <laughs> playing songs for way too long mm -hmm. not really knowing when to stop you know, um, uh -huh. and, uh, so yeah, that was like the most, <laughs> so Scott was there for that. It was probably, the, I mean, this is saying a lot in <sighs> my, in my, my career. Well, then it sounds it historical is. for him to be there. That sounds historical. <laughs> <laughs> Memorable and historical. I just will say that I noticed he posted a couple of videos and there was nothing negative at all. It was just I know. like, I, I know. it was, it was just like, Hey, first performance in this time. It wasn't like there was no judgment. There was yeah. no like, isn't that shitty or is that weird or isn't that great? Yeah. It was just no, like, we, here it is. Have, I, I realized it last night and I said it, I said it out loud. It was like, what an amazing thing to be beyond 
beyond that criticism now because like the people that are well, there right we're not we're but, not we're we're not yeah. you know, all of this stuff is extremely modest we're playing very small shows we're playing house shows um we're playing playing small places you know yeah and so yeah. there there is no there is no expectation we're not we're not trying to we're not trying to fill a big club we're not trying to we're not even really trying to we're just we're just we're just going we're just yeah. moving. We're just moving again, and it's really yeah, one, exactly. wonderful to have people with Show us who, who, and... and who are so kind to us. And then also, you know, it's amazing. And I gotta, I gotta get going. I gotta yeah, go. I, I know I have to go too. I have to do some work before I have to go see Izzy's performance. So, yeah. Izzy, that's a big one. It's a big I know one, Izzy is performing in uh, the Aristocats today. Uh, it's a Broadway camp, and um, she's been practicing, and it's yeah. God, I'm, I'm, I'm really. I'm I know. I know. Real. I'm like, she, whoa, this is she, a big one. She asked me to record the whole thing for you, and I said, I don't think I can because it's a half an hour. I don't think I can record a whole half an hour on my phone for Daddy. But I said I will definitely try to you take could. as much video as I can of your performance, and I'm hoping. I'm assuming the the camp will probably record the whole thing you know and like send out an email or something after yeah. and sell it to me <laughs> i don't know whatever they might I don't not care. They're actually not i don't that one. No, not that one i don't think they will i don't think they will i think yeah. they'll give it away but um so yeah i have a, just a couple hours to work before um i gotta go to that so okay. but give me i'm so glad we were able to be here for our raw impressions listeners too Luckily, the, the sorry room, we were late, guys. The great thing is the room I'm sleeping in has no shade, so I woke up with the sun today. Yay! Who needs a whole night's sleep when you're on tour and you're 58 years old? I know. Not me. Lucky fifth. Lucky it's five. Fine. Eight. Welcome, sun. Wake All me. All right, up. let's sing it together. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> The final. Oh, give me, give me all, all your, your raw impressions, your, your thoughts, your, your words, your, your time. time.